guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you guys through eight self-care habits that I'm trying to incorporate into my life and that you should try to incorporate into yours. I know on this app, there's a lot of morning routines and night routine videos, and I love them. I love watching them. I get so much inspiration from them. But for me, when I try to do a morning routine, I'll come up with a really like extensive routine. And then after like three days, I'll kind of get burnt out from it. So this is kind of just to throw things at you that you could add to your morning routine or night routine, but without the pressure of I have to complete every single one of these things the second I wake up in this exact order so you don't feel as like about it. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for with this video. I'm also going to kind of go from physical self-care well-being and slowly transitioning more to like mental self-care. So that's kind of going to be the trajectory of the habits. Before we jump into that, I'm going to ask you to subscribe if you aren't already. Make sure to click the little notification bell and if you like this video to give it a big thumbs up. And then with that, let's just jump in. The first habit is probably the easiest one and that's just to start taking vitamins. I started doing this with the new year, I found a woman's vitamin that I really think is pretty good, kind of tastes like candy. It's like a little gummy. It has like all the basic vitamins, but also has like biotin for your hair and your skin and your nails. I felt like I was noticing the biggest difference in the strength of my nails, which is kind of crazy how fast it started working. These are just press-ons. Don't look too closely because then you'll be able to see. But my natural nails were lasting like two months of me not having to cut them or file them. Maybe it was the vitamin, maybe it was luck, but I think it was the vitamin. It's super easy to just pop those in in the morning before you eat breakfast or before you start your day. That one is pretty manageable. The second habit is to start eating organically. I am on my journey to hopefully one day become vegetarian. I really want to live the vegetarian lifestyle. I'm working towards it. I'm taking baby steps towards it. Right now I'm politarian, which means I only eat birds. So that's chicken and turkey. But you don't even have to become vegetarian to eat organically. The bottom line is that our food is our fuel like we are literally made up of the food that we eat and our energy comes from the food that we eat and how we feel depends on the food that we eat so if we start cutting out all of the junk all of the processed stuff and we start incorporating more organic stuff you'll 100% feel better if you're someone that struggles with acne eating organically can probably switch that for you. Eating less of like the processed junk has helped me with my acne problem. So I know it's not easy. That's why I say take baby steps. Start with like sodas or chips and look for the healthier alternatives of that. There's so many apps that give you like healthy alternatives to the junk food that you love. But yeah, just start being more mindful about what you're consuming and you will feel the benefits. Number three is going to be to drink more water. I know this one's so basic, but I was someone that struggled to drink enough water my whole life. Basically, I'm still probably not as good as I want to be, but I've been getting better at it. And I'll tell you the hack that has switched it for me. I bought this little tumbler right here. It's just a regular tumbler. You don't need those crazy expensive Stanley ones. In the morning, I'll just fill that up completely. And then I always make sure that it's like near me or I'm bringing it with me throughout the day. If I'm sitting down to read, it's right there. If I'm sitting down to work, it's right there so that it's like staring at me and I kind of don't have a choice. I just, you you know, we'll sip on it. And then at the end of the day, if I didn't really make the progress that I wanted to, then I'll just chug it before bed just to make sure that I'm like meeting the 16 fluid ounce minimum. And you should probably be drinking more water than that, but compared to how I was doing before, I'm definitely doing a lot better. So that's my hack that has helped me with that. Fourth thing is to step outside. Try to do it every day. I know sometimes I'll struggle if I don't have a reason to leave the house. I'm kind of just going to stay buried. I'm going to stay like on my computer or on social media or whatever it is it's easy to kind of get trapped and locked into the stuff that's inside but bottom line is our bodies love sunlight our bodies love fresh air so if you're like in a funk usually you just step outside hopefully the weather's a little nice you'll immediately feel better the science behind nature's effect on us is ridiculous so take a walk sit outside just try to be present in that moment get out of the thought cycles that you've been in get some vitamin c naturally it literally produces serotonin the happy chemicals so it'll help i promise the next one is to to pamper yourself and I mean this in the sense of like I have so many like face masks and foot masks and just like self-care things that I'm like oh I'm saving it for like when I really need it 
it or like my lotion sometimes i'm like oh do i need to use my lotion i don't want to waste my lotion that's kind of justified because everything is so expensive but what happens is that then my face masks and my lotions never get used ever because i'm like saving them for later pampering ourselves makes us feel good if we're doing a face mask if we're doing our nails if we're putting on cute pjs like we're putting energy into ourselves and we're showing ourselves that we're worth energy to groom and we're worth the extra effort i guess like why not it'll just make you feel good it'll make you feel cute it'll boost your mood it'll boost your self-esteem it's just a really really easy way to treat yourself and, and reward yourself and be kind to yourself so show yourself that love more often number six is to move your body this could be the gym i started going to the gym recently and i do really like it but on days where i'm a little busier i will still try to get movement in my body i'm someone that loves yoga i <laughs> I've been a yoga girl since like middle school. I love doing yoga. It just feels so good. So even if I don't have the time to do a workout, I will at least try to get in like a yoga sesh or if even that is too much, at least like a mini stretch, like even a five minute stretch. A lot of the times I'll lack the motivation to do the workout or to do the yoga, but never do I leave a workout or leave a yoga sesh regretting that I had done it. I always leave that feeling better, feeling more energized, feeling good and glad that I did it. So keep that in mind. The idea of it might not seem too great, but it feels good for your body. Your body's gonna thank you. But also just like taking that time to do something where you are in tune with your body and you're listening to your body and you're reconnecting to your body like that. I think in our today's society, it's really easy to kind of stay up in our minds and in the outer world, but just taking the time to tune back into our physical bodies, checking in, feeling it, being mindful of it, is going to change how you move through the world i feel and change your relationship with your body as well so just try to do that being able to check in like that has been something that i'm really grateful for that i get to do that every day the seventh thing maybe the thing i'm most excited about is to read reading i know if you're not a person that reads the idea of reading is kind of like if you are a person that reads, the idea of reading is like heaven. I'm trying to read every single day. Obviously, if you want to start reading, you don't have to be as strict. Go at your own pace. But everyone knows that reading has so many benefits, it improves your vocabulary, it makes you become more empathetic, and it's also just fun, depending on the book. Obviously, not every book is fun, but a lot of books are fun. Find the right book for you, or if you're someone that's more academic and you just want to learn about stuff, like there's literally a book for everyone, no matter what genre or the reason that you want to read there is always a book for you right now i'm reading anna karenina by leo tolstoy and he's a classic russian author and I, I picked it up because i was on a kick of like so much fantasy and like young adult stuff that's kind of like for fun and kind of unserious so i picked that up because i wanted to pick up something a little more academic a little more intellectual i guess and that's been a ride i've been reading it for a year and a half and i'm just about halfway so that's a thing i know reading's not for everyone but also just like taking the time to sit down and just be present with something physically there because I love physical books personally. The Kindles are great, but physical book immediately will lock me into the present moment because there's like this real thing that I can touch and I can feel and I can smell. And maybe that's a bit of an oxymoron to say that it locks me into the present moment because I'm also literally removing myself from my present self and the present environment to go into the environment and the characters in the book. I don't know. It's also just a really peaceful activity you have social media and TV and music and all this other forms of entertainment that can be kind of overstimulating. Reading is just words on a page. It's really peaceful and I think we can all benefit from having a hobby or a routine or a practice or some activity that we do every day that is on the peaceful side instead of on the loud and overstimulating side. So I encourage you to try and pick it up because I loved reading my whole life. I'm always learning something from every book. It's brought me so much joy try it and then that brings us to the last habit that you should incorporate into your life and that habit is journaling now if you know me at all <laughs> you would know that I'm kind of a journaling freak. I'm a little bit crazy about it. I'm looking at all of the journals that I own right now and I can count 10. 
10 different types of journals. I don't use all of them religiously. The one that I'm most strict about is kind of my daily journal. Every day, at the end of the day, I sit down and I journal about my day. I do that every single day and that's kind of the most important one, but I have a billion other journals. I have a reading journal, I have a poetry journal, what do I have? I have a brain dump journal, I have a manifestation journal, I have an audition journal, a dream journal. There's, there's a lot of them. You don't have to be as crazy as me. You can kind of pick your poison there. I've made other videos about it and would like to update that because there's more now. But to kind of focus on self-reflection journaling and the daily journaling that I do, if yoga and exercise is a way to check in with your physical body. Journaling is a way to check in with your mental self, right? So our mind is an extremely unorganized and chaotic space, honestly. I find that writing about my feelings, writing about my thoughts has always been a way for me to kind of organize it. If my mind gets cluttered, putting it down on paper tends to declutter it. Or if I had more of a rough day, me putting it onto paper kind of feels like I'm getting it out of here and putting it onto there. And then I can move on to the next day kind of coming from a fresh spot without the baggage or the burden that can exist from the previous day. It's also made me more mindful and present in my life. It's made me like more specific about parts of my life that are kind of like unfulfilling. If I had a tricky day that I kind of felt bleh about, when I journal about it, I can see specifically like what happened in my day that made me feel that way. For example, if I journal about my day and I'm journaling about all these habits that I talked about, Oh, I did have this really organic meal. I took my vitamin, I drank all my water, I did a workout this morning, and then I read a little bit. Like usually then at the end of the day, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm in a good place. And then when I look back at my journal, I'm like, of course I am feeling in a good place because I did all these things. So you're kind of able to correlate your feelings with how you spent your time. And that's been really beneficial. I can go into so much depth about why you need to be journaling. But like I said, I've made videos about it. Go check them out. It's just the benefits are are extensive. My journaling practice has truly changed my life for the better. I tell everyone that they should do it even when I know that they're like oh, I'm never gonna do it. I'll still try to get them to do it because it's so beneficial. It's so helpful and only good things can come from it. You don't have to add the pressure of like having to do it every day. That's just something that I'm worked towards. You can start with once a week or even once a month or whenever the hell you want. That's kind of like the purpose of my brain jump journal. If you do want to start you can check out those videos but 100% it's a habit that will change your life for the better of all the ways journaling is going to be number one most significant biggest impact most profound i implore you i implore you give it a try you will not regret it i promise pinky promise Okay, so that will bring us to the end of this video. Hopefully you resonated with some of the stuff I said and want to incorporate it into your life, maybe daily, maybe bi-daily, maybe weekly, however, however you want to manage it, you will 100% reap the benefit. First of all, thank you so much for watching. It means so much. If you did enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Join our little family that we're growing. If you are very passionate about any of the things I said, leave a comment and let Let's have a conversation about it. And I hope that I can see you guys in my next video. Bye.